Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create one of the most common tropes of the web design world, the card grid. And we're going to make it fluidly responsive across all screen sizes. Now, we could build this via a float or a flex based grid and a handful of breakpoints, but why deal with breakpoints if grid layout can handle everything for us? Grid can do so much more than recreating old design patterns, uh, but if you're looking for a good place to start, this is one of the best introductions to its power. So before we can do anything else, we need to set up our markup for our cards and our card container. So you can see here in the HTML section, I have section class card container, and it's filled with articles that are a uh, class of card. Each one's got a little header inside of it, an image, a little description, and a link. This is pretty much your standard card grid layout. Uh, each card looks about the same and just has different content. In this example, all the cards have the same content. You can see we have about 10 of them in here, and this is really the last we're gonna see of our markup. We don't really need to, to dive back into it. We also have a little bit of style set up just to make them look a little bit nicer once they're in their final form. We've got a, an extra font family. We're setting some colors on the backgrounds. We've got a box shadow, not a whole lot of important stuff happening down here. We're styling the button to, to look like a button instead of just being you know, a link at the bottom. But that's really all we've got for, for stylistic markup. The rest of the work we're gonna do today is gonna be strictly around the layout. Once we have our markup in place and our style set the way we like them visually, we're gonna dive in and we're gonna create our grid. Now the first step to doing this is we're going to just make our card container a container that is expecting to have grid items underneath it. And we'll do that by changing the display value from block to grid. After we've done that, we can now use all the properties that are available to us on the grid parent. So we're going to define our grids columns by using the grid template columns CSS property. And to start with, we're just gonna set this to three columns, one fractional unit each. And just like that, we have three columns across where our grid items all automatically flow up into our layout. Unlike flex where the, where the layout is controlled by each item, grid has each of the items flow into the layout that we specify. If we change this instead of one FR, we change this first one to be 10 pixels, it's gonna do its best to make that 10 pixels and then make the other ones uh, one fractional unit. Maybe 100 pixels will look a little bit better there. There we go. So this automatically sets all of our columns to all of our rows to have one column of 100 pixels and then fill up the rest of the space with those two other ones. Now the downside to this is it doesn't do a whole lot of extra stuff like Flexbox would do for us here. It is fluid, but it doesn't automatically break to responsive sizes. Now we could write some simple media queries down here to take care of that, you know, uh, min and max sizes, but we want to use the full power of grid and not have to utilize breakpoints to do something this simple. So instead of doing that, we're going to use two primary functions of the grid template column values. The first is going to be the repeat function. And this very easily replaces the, mark, uh, the CSS that we wrote before by saying we're gonna repeat this three times, one fractional unit each. This is just a shorthand for grid template columns, one FR, one FR, one FR, just a simple little syntactic sugar. The next step is we're gonna replace this count value of three. So instead of three times it's gonna repeat, we're gonna change that to the keyword auto fit. There are two keywords that work here, auto fit and auto fill. And the biggest difference is what they do with the blank columns left. Uh, there's a great article, which I'll post in the description from Rachel Andrews uh, in her grid by example series that, that really explains the big difference between those two. And then it allows us to specify a size for each of those. So we're going to come in here and instead of trying to auto fit one FR, which automatically makes this a one column design, we're going to use another function called the min max function. And what this allows us to do is specify a minimum size for each of our columns and a maximum size. So here we're gonna specify 300 pixels for our minimum and then that one FR for our maximum. And you can see now we're at two columns because the screen size is only able to fit two 300-ish pixel wide columns in a row. But as we get bigger, we go up to three, and then if we change our view into a full page, we can see that at full size, it automatically goes four across. So this is great, 
but it's a little bit messy. So we're gonna use one more line of CSS to create some gaps inside of our grid. Instead of using margins, which can, can mess up our grid, but which work great for Flexbox and work great for floats, we're going to specify a grid-gap value. And what this does is it creates a gap inside of our grid of, in this case, one rem that goes actually in between our columns and in between our rows. You can actually specify instead a grid column gap if you want it to be a different size than your grid row. And if you don't have both, it would help if I put a gap in there. It specifies just that. In our case, we want both to be the same, so we'll have grid gap of one rem. And you can see now that background is starting to come through. It does automatically do the math for you so that you don't have to worry about subtracting that rem from any widths or any margins that you might have anyway. And then worst case scenario, let's say you wanna have a little bit of that same spacing around our grid as well as inside. We can just select a padding of one rem to go along with it. And now we have a fully fluid, responsive grid with no breakpoints necessary. Now, if you're interested in seeing this in its full version, I have a blog post on my website, brianlrobinson.com, that has the full explanation of how this works, as well as the code pen that you can use to copy and paste, to fork it, to do whatever you want with. This is a simple four-line grid that comes out with the power of CSS grid layout. And if you're curious for more CSS tips and tricks, you can follow me on Twitter at brob, or like I said before, my website, brianlrobinson.com. Thanks for your time today, and I hope you keep working through grid layout.